win. Line drive, spear by Holborn. Saves a run, the glove door. Dick drives center field. Grand slam, way out of here. Up the middle for a base hit. The tying run scored. The winning run scored. Mo Vaughn. Vaughn hits this one in the air to right field. Well tagged. Higginson back. Looks up. Go and go on a home run. Oh, we need a little of that right now. Mo Vaughn joining <laughs> us for the first time this season. He'll be joining us throughout the year as we get ready for game four this season. Mo Vaughn, my friend, how are you? How you doing, Tom? Good. How are you? All right? We're doing well here. Could use a win, but Good. that's all right. We'll get to that. Uh, you know, when yes. you look you look back on those highlights uh, sitting there, what, what does that bring back? What does it make you think of when you watch that highlight reel? Uh, I was smiling. It was just a lot of great things. And just wearing a uniform, playing in Fenway, um, just going out there trying to produce it. It's, it's great to see. It's uh, brought, a lot, brought back a lot of great memories. You know, certain guys who wear the uniform, I think, kind of connect with fans more than others, uh, resonate with Red Sox fans. You certainly did that. You were a Northeast guy. I think you understood the passion, the intensity. What was it about Red Sox fans, Fenway Park, that brought out the best in you? I think, you know, coming up, we were all trying to to, to, to win that World Series. And I think every spring training, you know, we, we wanted to be that on that team. We wanted to be in that locker room when that happened. So, you know, coming up through spring training, was always very much excited about we're going to break this curse, whatever, you know, you want to call it. We're going to come up here and we're going to get to the World Series and win. So, we're, you know, opening day was always crucial because it was just trying to try to win that that World Series for the, for, you know, for the organization. All right, speaking of opening days, one of my favorite opening day moments, 1998. I'm sure it's up there on your list as well. The walk-off Grand Slam in 1998. What do you remember about that game and about that moment? I don't know. I think we were facing Mandy Johnson, and he was kind of tearing us apart. And all of a sudden, you know, you know, when you have a great pitcher like that, you're just waiting. Anytime this guy comes out of the game, anything's gonna, something's going to change. I think we got him out of the game. And we started scoring runs, um, hit after hit, got some walks. I was able to step to the plate when in the situation with, you know, hitting home runs is all, all about knowing the pitcher and, and being in that situation, having a little familiarity. I knew Spall Jarek, you know, you know, pretty well and was able to capitalize. So it was just great uh, to be able to come back from a day. I think Randy Johnson was just mowing us down and to keep pushing as always Red Sox teams and the fans keep us motivated to get up there at that time and, and, and help us win was, was a great thing for me. You know, you bring up a great point. With Tampa Bay in town, we've seen the game change, right? We saw in the World Series last year, Blake Snell is taken out because they don't want him to face the third time through the order. But you can almost feel the Dodgers come to life when he comes out of the game. We've seen that. You're talking about it with Randy Johnson. That plays into the hitter's hand when you got a, a red-hot starter coming out of the game, doesn't it? Absolutely. Listen, I, there's things that, that need to be used by analytics, but that was the time I feel that the manager needs to know in his art, in his heart, this guy is, is, is producing and, and, and he has them on their heels. And I think sometimes the game goes too much to, well, at this point in time, it's, it's time for a guy to come out of the game. But what about what the manager sees and what's going on? I think those things are just as important. Understanding and knowing the feel for the game is, is crucial in making those decisions. You know, we've also got, and we're going to bring uh, you and Jim Rice together a little later in the show. We'll talk more about this. But when you, when you look at how the game has changed, there's so many all-or-nothing hitters in the game now. The strikeouts rack up, but the home runs rack up too. You, know, you hit for power, but you hit for average as well. You know, there were times where maybe you had to shorten the swing a little bit and do what you needed to do to maybe get on base or move the guys along. What's your reaction to how that has gone in the game offensively right now where there's so much uh, all or nothing from today's lineups? Listen, I'm not going to say I don't like it. I just wish it were played the way that Jimmy taught me to play when I came up um, as a batting coach. You know, you got two strikes. You you started looking for certain things and shorten up and hit the ball, you know, with, where it's pitched. I'm sure Jimmy goes, talks about that 
consistently now, and I will continue to do that. Um, I honestly think that you should, I think the, the shift has forced guys to say, you know what, I'm not going to continue to hit that ball through the first and second base hole with the second baseman standing in short right field and it's an out. Why don't I just swing over it or swing through it or swing up and hit it over? It's the same out that we made before, you know, the same out that we're making. So I think the game needs to change. Guys need to be rewarded. Alex Rodriguez was talking about this last night. I heard him saying it on, on, on Sunday Night Baseball. Get two guys on one side of the infield, two guys on the other side of the infield. When a guy hits a ball up the middle or where the, where the, where, you know, where the ball is pitched, he needs to be rewarded for it. And I think that will change a lot of things. Be in favor of that? You'd be okay with that, banning the shift, making it uh, both sides of the infield? Absolutely. Yeah. I think what that does is that forces, guy, forces pitches to make better pitches. Guys get rewarded for what they do. And now they took a bubble. There's not many double plays. Now you got to get the athletic guys in the middle of the field doing what the Roberto Alomars when I played. Guys like that, and then turn these double plays. And, and, and the game goes back to, to what it's supposed to be. And you get That's more action, opinion. more action in the game. And I couldn't agree action, with you more. That's what we more need. Action. We talk about pace of play. We need action to play. All right, Mo, stay more right action. there. We're going to bring you back in a few minutes, get some more action with your old hitting coach, Jim Rice. We're going to bring the coach in, get you going here, put you to, put you to the task as we uh, continue. We're going to take a look at what J.D. Martinez has been up to. Red Sox getting ready to open up maybe the most analytical team in baseball. The Tampa Bay Rays, they won the American League but lost the World Series last year. Game one of the series coming up. Red Sox first pitch on Nesson is presented by Rodenheiser Home Services, your trusted electrical experts for 90 plus years. Schedule all of your electrical needs with Rodenheiser today. You said something about your hips, so what are you trying to do with your hips? You when you uh, launching the ball. Um, you know, I feel like when in 2018, when I rolled my ankle in the World Series, I felt like. I was really scared to really rotate my my hip with my ankle because I kind of just, it hurt, you know? So the body is the ultimate compensator, so I slowly started to just like kind of come out of my hips and started jumping at the ball without noticing why and all these triggers that I used to do didn't, wasn't working. And I'm sitting here wondering what the heck's going on? And then I come to find out, it's like, well, let's work on my, on my ankle and that'll get better. And then we started grinding. And then once that was better, then we started working more on the, the shoulder. But hold on, let me hit. You see that he come up, he's it's coming up off of that back toe. And so when he come off the back toe, that's when that hip get through. That back toe doesn't come good. up. That hip is not coming through. So I see what he's saying. All right, that was J.D. Martinez, back at Sox at sundown. Uh, but we are joined once again by Mo Vaughn, reunited with his hitting coach, Jim Rice. Uh, we got two MVPs here. We got a lineup tonight. Pretty good lineup. But I tell you right now, I'm batting third. I, I tell you what, I am batting first, or I'm on the bench with you two guys here. Uh, Mo, let's I'll talk. I'll bat fourth. I'll bat behind you. There you go. You bat behind you, three and four. Yeah, lefty right, right, left, little left, right combo. Uh, Mo, let's talk about that, Jim. You and I have talked about that, J.D. Martinez. Talking about some of the struggles he had last year and saying it kind of goes back to the he didn't realize the ankle was still a problem and everything else starts to fall apart, right? If something's wrong, the rest of the body starts to overreact. Uh, you ever go through anything like that where all of a sudden you start to stop and realize everything's falling out of sync because one thing is the root of the problem? You guys realize that in 1999 when I fell in the dugout mm -hmm. in Anaheim on my left ankle, five years later I was out of the game. I was never the same. I could never uh, reconnect. I couldn't drive. I couldn't drop. You need your base. So I can understand clearly what JD is talking about. Your feet hurt. You know, your front foot's hurting. And then all of a sudden, you compensate and you don't even realize. Then you get yourself in a bad pattern. Jimmy will tell you sometimes injuries create a lot of different things that you don't even understand when you're playing the game. And all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're, you're off your game. And I thought about what he said, and, and that's, a, and you know, same thing with Big Poppy. Pop, Big Poppy said, look, I still can play, but my feet are bothering me. And so now I'm realizing mm -hmm. a lot of times now, guys are, are seeing the ability is there, 
But if that pain, those feet would carry that body every day, you can't do it. Jim, JD's off right. to a, a five for 10 start. Hit his first home run yesterday. And you were talking about, you watch, he's more compact, right? The foot's going to the ball. What have you seen from him so far this year? He more, he, he, he's compact compared to last year. And I, was, uh, I always had the situation of thinking that the front foot determines everything. Because if the ball's away, you gotta pretend you gotta catch the ball. You gotta have happy feet. You gotta move the ball. Because the only way you're gonna hit that ball to the, uh, if a ball's thrown to the outside corner, you got to go get the ball to the outside corner because if you're pulling towards uh, left field, you're going to pull the ball. Your swing is too big. You can't do it. So you got to pretend that once the ball is thrown to you, away, middle, in, or even inside, you become a catcher. You got to use those feet. Mo, you talked about it before, right? I mean, you got you to have everything in sync. You got to go where the pitch is, right? Don't try to pull everything because you got to be able to go opposite field. You were always able to do that. JD's perfect right now. He's staying inside the fastball. He's hitting it where it's pitched. And on the breaking balls, he's staying right there, also hitting the ball where it's pitched. He's keeping his bat in the strike zone a long time, giving him the ability to hit hit the fastball, you know, and do many, many things keeping that bat in the strike zone. So he's swinging the, you know, the bat very, very well. If it, if it was his, you know, he, it was his foot, you know, last year, this year, he's really on top of his game, swinging the bat, you know, well, on in, in all counts and giving himself a chance to stay on that breaking ball and hit the ball the other way. And that's why his average is, is and his power is up. When you were 1995, Mo, you were the MVP. You had a former MVP as your hitting coach. That must have been a pretty good year. I mean, that must have been a pretty good relationship when you were hitting a coach for Mo Vaughn or having the year he was having. Well, I never called him Mo. I would call him Maurice. When I got, up, <laughs> I got, when I got upset, I called him Mo. But that's Maurice. Yeah. <laughs> But you know, we, it was we, tremendous, you know, you know. Go ahead. You know, when I was a kid, Jim Rice was the man. And I'm, I'm living in southern New England. We played on, you know, we saw Boston games. And we also saw Yankee games down there. And then in 1995, for him to be my hitting coach was, uh, was unbelievable. I had the best probably two years of my life as, as, as him being my hitting, co hitting coach. So, I'm, you know, I'm always indebted to Jim Rice. Thank you. But see, with Mo, if you watch his swing, the ball stays on the bat long. Mo didn't have too many ground balls, too many rollovers. And that's what I always say. Keep the ball on the bat as long as possible. Because guys like us, we're not going to beat a, we're not gonna beat an infield ball out. So what we got to do, we got to keep those infielders moving left or right so we got a chance to get a base hit. But once we get the ball in the power alleys, it's going to be a home run or definitely a double. Yes. Mo, he would always say, Jim always tells me, you know, he never tried to hit a home run. Uh, except for the few yeah. times where someone tried to drill you, then yeah. maybe you tried to hit a home run next time against them. Yeah. But for you, Mo, did you ever step up to the plate thinking home run, or was it always a case of just trying to drive the ball with power, see where it goes? I think there's certain situations where you're like, man, we 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 trying to win this game right here. And, you know, Jimmy always used to tell me, get your base. If you want to juice the ball, just move your hands faster. You know, you don't get your body in the way. People got to get their body out of the way and just use their hands. Sometimes there's, there's times in the game where, you know, you're trying to get through the ball and win a game. But actually, for me, I, I tailored my swing for Fenway Park. I wanted to take that ball down the middle and drive it the other way. To, the, you know, once I understood that the, the green monster was so close, I just tried to stay inside the ball the whole, the whole time. And that actually kept me on the ball, on breaking balls. And when I went to pull, my body was in good position. Slow, like Mo was saying, slow body, quick hands. The hands are much quicker than the body. If you, the body goes out too quick, the hands are lagging. You got to make sure you get those hands out. And that's where JD's talking about. He can spin up that back foot. But if your body gets out, you can't spin because you rotate it. You turn it around. But once you get the hands there, get on top of the ball, drive the ball, the back foot's going to hit it automatically. All right, we got just a couple moments left here. I'll let each of you, Mo, you start. If this were 1995 and you were 0-3 and you're coming in Monday and the fans are already getting restless, what would you say, what would you do, or would you do nothing differently today for game four? Listen, I think, you know, you just got to keep pushing it. You know, it's, it's been hustle. You know, guys are out there hustling. You got to make the pitches. You got to stay positive. You know the situation that you're in the locker room. You know the media and you know the fans. Stay together and keep pushing. You're going to break. One of these things is going to break, and you're going to get that first win, and then you're going to keep, keep rolling. I would come in and say, hey, guys, get on my back. I got you today. And then the first thing they would think about, 
He can't do it by himself, guys. We got to help him. And then the whole team right. said, I'll go in. And so you, you get you get in the team together now. But when you say, hey, right. don't worry about it, I got it. You know, Mo was there when, when you got a guy like Roger Clemens or when I had a guy like Tia, and he come and say, hey, Roger, how many you need today? One run. And that's all. Right. Get. And the guys are going, one run? We're going to get him one run. But they're going to get more than that. And those are the things that you need to do. You had Pedro Martinez and get like that. Just say, give him one run. He got it. Good stuff. Mo, it's been fun having you on. Looking forward to doing this more this season. And by the way, I challenge you to find another show with 710 home runs uh, lined up on the screen right now, okay? I, I like to say between the three of us, we hit 710 home runs. But uh, I'll yeah, we did. To we you did. Guys. Uh, Mo, good stuff. We'll do it again next week. Thank you. And let's get the Zoom okay, right next time, buddy. We can get the Zoom right, all right? Yeah, don't let him give all you right. any, any tips on that, okay? Do not listen to Jim Rice. <laughs> Have a good one, Maurice. Hey, see you guys later. Thanks right, a lot. Yeah. See you, Jimmy. Okay. Good start. Right, hit dog. Uh, Mo Vaughn with us as we get ready to go. It's going to be the case all season long. Mo will be joining us. Kevin Euclid tomorrow. Jonathan Papelbon later this week on Thursday. Ellis Burke will be in studio doing games as well. Expanded coverage pre and post game all season long right here on Ness. Red Sox Game Day Live on Nesson is presented in part by Old Dominion, the official freight carrier of Major League Baseball and the Boston Red Sox.